This is the Edexcel Foundation tier, paper one, non-calculator, from November 2019. Question one says write down the value of the seven in the number 1074. So the seven is in the tens column. It's worth seven tens or 70. Question two, write 4.58 correct to one decimal place. So if we look at the number, so look at the number after the one decimal place, look at the next number, the second decimal place, is it five or above? If it is, we round up. If it isn't, it stays as it is. So it's an eight, it is five or above. So we're gonna round up. So the five is gonna turn into a six. It's 4.6 correct to one decimal place. It's closer to 4.6 than it is to 4.5. Question three, work out 31.7 times 100. We can times by 100 by times in by 10 twice. So 31.7 times 10 is 317 times 10 again will be 3,170. Write the fraction 28 over 70 in its simplest form. So to cancel a fraction, we're going to look for a number that's a factor of the numerator and the denominator. So we can half them both. We can divide them both by two. And if we do that, we'll get 14 over 35. Is there any number that 14 and 35 are both in the times table of? They're both in the seven times table. So we can divide them both by seven now. 14 divided by seven is two. Two sevens are 14 and five sevens are 35. So we've got two fifths. 28 out of 70 is the same as two fifths. And question five, write 15% as a decimal. 15, to change a percentage to a decimal, we divide by 100. So 15 divided by 100 is 0 0.15. Question six, the pictogram shows information about the number of pictures sold in an art shop in each of January, February and March. So we've got eight pictures for a whole square. So each of these half squares is going to be half of eight, which is four. So each of these big squares is eight. And the half squares are going to be worth four. Write down the number of pictures sold in January. So eight plus eight plus eight. That's 24. 12 pictures were sold in April. Show this information on the pictogram. So we need to draw on 12 pictures. So that's going to be an eight and a four. Eight and four make 12. So one whole box and half a box. What was the total number of pictures sold in these four months? So we know April was 12. We know January is 24. February, well, it's four more than January. So that's 28. And for March, we've got well, four less than January, which is 20. So we need to add all of these together. So we've got 24, 28, 20, and 12. So 24, 28, 20, 
and 12. We'll add them all together. So the ones we've got 2 and 8 make 10, plus 4 is 14. So 4 in the ones carry one over. And then we've got 2, 4, 6, 7, 8. So 84 pictures. Question 7. Work out the difference in minutes between 1 hour and 25 minutes and 1 and a quarter hours. So a quarter of an hour An hour is 60 minutes, a quarter of an hour is 15 minutes. So a quarter of an hour, a quarter of 60 is 15. A quarter of an hour is 15 minutes. So what's the difference in minutes between 1 hour 25 and 1 hour 15? What's the difference in minutes? 25 take away 15 is 10. The difference is 10 minutes. Question eight. Pressure has five blocks of wood. The total weight of all five blocks is three kilograms. Four of the blocks each have a weight of 650 grams. Work out the weight in grams of the other block of wood. So the total weight is three kilograms, which is a kilogram is a thousand grams. So 3000 grams in total. Four blocks each have a weight of 650 grams. So if we do 4 times 650, so to times by 4, I can double it and double it again. So double 650, two 650s, two 600s, or 1,200, two 50s is 100, so that's 1,300, so four 650s is double 1,300, which is 2,600. So the other block must be 3,000, take away 2,600, which is 400 grams. Question nine. PQR is a straight line. Work out the size of angle X. The angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So X 135 must equal 180 degrees. So 135 makes 135. So 180 take away 135 will give us our missing angle. So zero take away five will be negative. So I'm gonna avoid that by taking one of the tens and putting it in the ones column. So we've got 10 take away five, which is five. Seven take away four in the tens is three. And zero, well, one take away one is zero. So we've got 45 degrees, the missing angle is 45 degrees. 45 and 35 make 80, plus 100 is 180. Question 10. Plot the point with coordinates 3, 2. So it's x, then y. So 3, 2. x is 3. y is 2. And label this point A. Write down the coordinates of the midpoint of BC. So in the middle of this line, BC. So where's the middle? So from B to C, we go along 4 and down 4. 
So a long four down four. The middle must be half of that, a long two down two. So halfway, halfway along this line. What are, what are the coordinates? So x then y, x is negative one, and the y is zero. Negative one, zero. Mason throws a coin three times. The outcome of each throw is either heads or tails. List all the possible outcomes of the three throws. So we can get heads or tails and we're going to do it three times. So we could get heads, heads and heads again. Or heads, heads and tails. So they're the options for heads then heads. If we get heads then tails, we could get heads. Or we could get heads, tails, tails. So heads, heads, these are all the options with the heads first. And let's do the tails. So we could get tails, tails, tails. Or tails, tails, heads or tails, heads, tails, or tails, heads, heads. So they are all the combinations of throwing the coin three times. Question 12. Rehan is on holiday in the USA. He has $200 to spend on clothes. Rehan buys one pair of trainers costing $60. Three t-shirts costing $25 each. He also wants to buy a jacket costing $80. Has Rehan got enough money to buy the jacket? So let's work out how much he spent. So $60 for the pair of trainers. And three twenty-fives for the t-shirts. So three lots of twenty-five is seventy-five. So he spent sixty dollars and seventy-five dollars. So zero and five is five. Six and seven is thirteen. So he spent a hundred and thirty-five dollars so far. He has two hundred. So two hundred. Take away 135, that's going to give us $65 left. He wants to buy a jacket costing $80. So does he have enough money? Well, no, he doesn't. He only has $65 left. The trainers cost $60. The exchange rate is $1 is 74.9p. Rehan says the trainers cost less than £40. He is wrong. Using a suitable approximation. Show working to explain why. Well, for the... For the trainers to be worth $40, the exchange rate would have to be 0 0.66. So we could show it by, if we did 60 times 0 0.7. So if the exchange rate was 0 0.7 instead of 0 0.749, six sevens are 42. So that will be 42 pounds. So show working to explain why the trainers cost more than 42 pounds. Thirteen A simplify two A times five B. 
So 2a means 2 times a, 5b means 5 times b, so we've got 2 times a times 5 times b, and all we can really do to simplify this is 2 times 5 is 10, and then it's times a times b, and we just write those down in alphabetical order, 10ab. Part b, simplify, 3x plus 2y plus 5x minus a y. So we're going to add the x's to the x's and add the y's to the y's. And we're always using the sign from in front of the letter. So it's 3x plus 3x plus 5x, which is 8x. And 2y take away a y, 2y take away 1y is 1y. So it's 8x and 1y. 14, work out 23 times 15. So we've got 23 times 15. 5 threes are 15. 5 twos are 10, plus the 1 is 11. Now we're multiplying by 10, so I'm going to put the 0 here. 1 3 is 3, 1 2 is 2. So adding these together, 5 and 0 is 0, 1 and 3 is 4, 1 and 2 is 3. So we've got 345. Question 15. 120 people were at a hockey match. Each person was asked if they wanted to stand or to sit to watch the match. 75 of the people were female. So we're going to complete this frequency tree. So if 75 are female, how many are male? So 120 take away the 75. Or what do you have to add on to 75 to get to 120? So 25 to get to 100. Another 20 to get to 120. Which makes it 45. 29 of the males wanted to stand. So 29 standing. How many are sitting? So what do we have to add on to 29? to get to 45, add 1 to get to 30, and then 15 to get to 45. So 1 and 15, 16. 30 of the people wanted to sit. So we've already got 16. We need 14 more sitting. And then to complete the frequency tree, 14 plus what number equals 75. So one more to get to 15, and then 60 more to get to 75. So 61 more. One of the people is chosen at random. Write down the probability that they're a male who wanted to stand. So there are 29 of them out of 120 in total. So it's probability, we can write it as a fraction of decimal or a percentage. It's 29 out of 120. So we're gonna write it as a fraction. Question 16, Steve drove from his home to his friend's house. He stayed at his friend's house and then drove home. Here is Steve's travel graph. For how many minutes did Steve stay at his friend's house? So that's the bit where he's not moving. He's staying the same distance away from home. So that was in between 12.45, which is halfway between 12.30 and 1 o'clock, and 1.30. So 12.45 to 1.30, 13.30, 30. 
is 15 minutes and 30 minutes, which is 45 minutes. What was Steve's average speed on his journey home? So for speed, I'm going to do the distance divided by the time. Or I'm just going to look at the distance and the time because the distance is 25 kilometers. So 25 kilometers in 30 minutes. That's how long it took him to get home from half one to two is 30 minutes. So I'm not going to use speed equals distance over time. To go from 30 minutes to an hour, I'm going to double it. So he went 50 kilometers or he was going at the speed of 50 kilometers in one hour. In one hour, if he kept going at the same speed, he would have gone 50 kilometers. So that's 50 kilometers per hour. If he goes 25 kilometers in half an hour, he would have gone 50 kilometers in a whole hour. Question 17, x minus one is equal to two, work out the value of two x squared. So we need to solve this equation first. So what is x? What number is x? So if I have plus one to both sides, I get x is equal to three. So three minus one is two. X must be three. So now I need to work out the value of two X squared. That's two times three squared. We do the indices first. And then we do multiplication. We have to follow the right order of operations. The indices are done first. So three squared is nine. So we've got two times nine, and that is 18. Question 18. The pie charts show information about the favorite animal of each student at school A and of each student at school B. So we've got two pie charts here. We've got missing angles in the school A pie chart, but we can work out what they are because we know the total angles, all the angles around the point have to add up to 360 degrees. So we've got 360 in total. Take away the 60 for the monkeys, which is, which leaves us 300 degrees for the lions and tigers, and they're both the same angle, they're both X. So they must both be half of 300, which is 150 degrees. So 150 degrees for lions and 150 degrees for tigers. Now we're told there are 480 students at school A and there are 760 students at school B Henry says the same number of students at each school have tigers as their favorite animal. Is Henry correct? So we need to work out how many students at each school have tigers as their favorite animal. So we know the fraction of students at each school that have tigers as their favorite animal. So at school A, 150 degrees out of six, out of 360 degrees, 150 out of 360 have tigers as their favorite animal. But there are 480. So we want to know what this is out of 480. If we, we can make this out of 480, if we divide by three, so divide top and bottom by three will give us 50 out of 120 and then times top and bottom by four. 
So 50 times 4 is 200. 120 times 4 is 480. So for school A, 200 students have tigers as their favourite animal. For school B, it's 90 out of 360. Ninety degrees out of three hundred and sixty degrees. That's the fraction of students that have tigers as their favourite animal. And that's the same as one quarter. So we want it out, out of seven hundred and sixty. We want a quarter of seven hundred and sixty. So let's just do seven hundred and sixty divided by four. So how many fours go in? to 760. 4 goes into 7 once with 3 left over. 4 goes into 36 9 times and 4 doesn't go into 0. So 4 goes into 0 no times. So that's 190 students. So is Henry correct? No. Question 19. Here is a number line. Write down the inequality shown on the number line. So we've got something called P. So what can P be? It's in between negative 3 and 1. So it's bigger than negative 3 and less than 1. And it can equal, the coloured in dot means it can equal negative 3. So it can equal negative 3, but the 1 dot isn't coloured in, so it can't equal 1. So it's bigger or equal to negative 3 and less than 1. Question 20. Find the lowest common multiple of 108 and 120. So that's the lowest number that's in the 108 and the 120 times tables. We can find this by breaking these numbers down into their prime factors. So if we start with 108, we can say that's 2 times 54. 2 is a prime number, 54 isn't because we can say 54 is 2 times 27. 2 is prime, 27 isn't because it's in the 3 times table, it's 3 nines. 3 is prime and 9 can be broken down into 3 squared, 3 times 3. The same for 120. So let's break it down. So two sixties, two is prime. Sixty is two thirties, and two is prime. Thirty is two fifteens, and fifteen is three times five. And three and five are both prime numbers. So for the lowest common multiple, let's do a Venn diagram. So that's have a circle for 108 and a circle for 120. So what's in both? We've got a 2, another 2, and a 3. Then 108's also got two more 3's and 120 it's got a 2 and a 5. The lowest common multiple is all of these numbers multiplied together. So 3 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 5. The 108 circle multiplies to make 108. So it's 108 times 2 times 5, which is 108 times 10, which will be 
1080. Question 21. There are 60 people in a choir. Half the people, so half of 60, in the choir are women. The number of women in the choir is three times the number of men. So 30 is three times what? 30 is three times 10. The rest of the people in the choir are children. So there are 60 people, 30 women, 10 men. That's 40, there must be 20 children. The number of children in the choir to the number of men in the choir is n to one. So 20 to 10, children to men, is the same as n to one, or we can simplify this ratio by dividing both by 10. That's two to one, so n must be two. Question 22. Work out one and three quarters times one and one third. Give your answer as a mixed number. So to multiply fractions, we can't have these mixed numbers. We have to change them into top heavy, into improper fractions. So let's change them first. So we've got one whole one, which is the same as four quarters. So one times four is four. We've got four quarters plus three quarters, which is seven quarters. And we've got one whole one. One three is three. One is the same. A whole one is the same as three thirds. Three thirds and one third makes four thirds. I can show you that on a picture as well. So one whole one cut into quarters is four quarters. And we've got one and three quarters. So one and three quarters is the same as seven quarters. And one whole one in thirds. And one more third is four thirds. So seven quarters and four thirds. We're going to multiply them together now. To multiply fractions, we can just times the top and times the bottom. We could also simplify this first. It doesn't matter which way round we do it. We could simplify it first and then times, or we could times and then simplify. If we times first, we're going to do seven fours are 28 over four threes are 12. And then we simplify. Or if we simplified first, we divide top and bottom by four before we started. And we'll go straight to seven thirds. In the same way, we could simplify first. We could simplify now. We've got 28 over 12. So half top and bottom and half them again. And we get to seven thirds. But we want our answer as a mixed number. This isn't a mixed number at the moment. We've got seven thirds. So how many whole ones do we have? We've got seven thirds. So each three makes a whole. So we've got two holes, which would be six thirds. And one more. So we've got two and one third. Two and one third is the same as seven thirds. Question 23. Use a ruler and compasses to construct the line from the point P perpendicular, so a 90 degree angle, to the line CD. You must show all your construction lines. So we grab a compass, we put the point on the X. So the point of the compass on the point P. We're going to extend it out, so we're going to draw an arc giving us two points on the line CD. And they will be two points that are the same distance away from P. 
So we've got two points now. The same distance, any point on this circle, is the same distance away from P. So these two points here must be the same distance from P. Then from each of them, we're going to draw another arc. So one from the first point. And one from the second point. So I kept the um, compass the same length. So both of these arcs are the same length. So this point here must be the same distance away from both of these points. So that means if I can connect P and the point I've just found, I'll have a perpendicular line. So I found a perpendicular line to CD. I've constructed the perpendicular line to CD that passes through the point P. Question 24. The diagram shows a triangle ABC. A DB is a straight line. The size of angle DCB, so where's that? DCB, this one here, to the size of angle ACD is 2 to 1. So this one is double this one. If this one's called X, this one's called 2X. It's twice as much. Work out the size of angle BDC. B D C. So this is the one that we're working out. I'll call that one Y because I just used X. Okay, so we can use the big triangle ABC and say angles in the triangle add up to 180 degrees. So 75 and 51 plus this angle I'll call it 3x because it's x plus 2x, must equal 180 degrees because angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So if we take 75 away from both sides, or should we add 75 and 51 first? Either way, so add 75 and 51 will give us 126 so 126 plus 3x is 180. Take 126 away from both sides. So 3x is equal to 54. And divide both sides by 3. x is 18. And that means 2x. So this one is 18 in here. 2x must be double that, which is 36 degrees. So now we can find this missing angle. So we've got 51, 36, and our missing angle equal 180 again, because it's another triangle. So 51 and 36, and our missing angle must equal 180. 51 and 36 make 87 degrees. So 87 plus Y is 180. Take 87 away from both sides. So take away 80 is 100. Take away 7 is 93. So our missing angle is 93 degrees. Question 25. Four red bricks have a mean weight of 5 kilograms. Five blue bricks have a mean weight of 9 kilograms. One green brick, brick has a weight of 6 kilograms. Donna says the mean weight of the 10 bricks is less than 7 kilograms. Is Donna correct? So we've got four bricks with a mean weight of 5. So in total, they weigh 4 times 5. 
which is 20 kilograms. Five bricks with a mean weight of nine. So they in total weigh five times nine, which is 45 kilograms. And one green brick has a weight of six. So in total, that's six. So to find the mean, we add them all up and divide by how many? So the total weight is 20 plus 45 plus six. 20 and 45 is 65, plus 6 is 71. So in total they weigh 71 kilograms. How many bricks are there? There are 10. So the mean is 71 divided by 10, which is 7.1 kilograms. So the mean is 7.1 kilograms. Is Donna correct? No. Question 26. Simplify p squared to the power of 5. When we have a bracket, we can times the powers. So 2 times 5 is 10. That's because the power of 5 means times itself 5 times. So it's the same as p squared times p squared times p squared times p squared times p squared, which means we've got 10 p's multiplied together. Part B, simplify 12x to the power of 7 times y cubed divided by 6x cubed times y. So 12x7y cubed over 6x cubed y. When we simplify a fraction, we can divide the top and the bottom by the same thing. So if we divide top and bottom by 6 or 12 over 6, that's 2 x to the power of 7 divided top and bottom by x cubed, or x to the power of 7 divided by x cubed is x to the power of 4, and divide top and bottom by y, y cubed divided by y is y squared. Question 27. The accurate scale drawing shows the positions of port P and a lighthouse L. And we have a scale that says one centimeter is four kilometers. Alina sails her boat from Port P on a bearing of 70 degrees. She sails for one and a half hours at an average speed of 12 kilometers per hour to Port Q. Find the distance from port Q to lighthouse L. So we need to know where Q is. So she sails for one and a half hours, 12 kilometers per hour. So for distance, we can do speed times time. So distance is going to be one and a half times 12. One twelve is 12. Half a 12 is 6, so 1.5 12s are 18. So 18 kilometres, and 1 centimetre is 4 kilometres. So how many centimetres is that? 18 divided by 4, which is 9 over 2, or 4.5. So we need to draw 4.5 centimetres on a bearing of 70 degrees. So we need to measure 70 degrees. So I'm going to place the center on the, uh, on, the, on the cross. I'm going to rotate it around. So zero is lined up with the north line. And then 70 degrees will bring us to here. So then I can grab the ruler. and draw on this line, four and a half centimeters will bring us to there. So 
there we have four and a half centimeters and that is our point Q that's our point Q the question said what's the distance from Q to L so again with the ruler from the point Q to L we have five and a half five and a half centimeters so five point five centimeters and one centimeter is four kilometers so five and a half times four double five and a half will be eleven double it again that's 22 so it's 22 kilometers the bearing of q from l so the bearing of q from l so from l and a bearing is always measured from the north line going clockwise so that's the angle we want, that whole angle there. So if I measure this small angle, I then do 360 take away that, that will give me what's left, that will give me the big angle. So let's measure the small angle. Which is... 38 degrees I'm measuring you may get something slightly different but there'll be a range of acceptable answers so 38 degrees is in here we want this other angle so the angles around the point add up to 360 degrees so 360 take away 38 that's going to give me 322 degrees. Question 28. The diagram shows triangle AOB. AOB is not an obtuse angle. So an obtuse angle is between 90 and 180 degrees. If it's not obtuse, we can say... AOB is less than or equal to 90 degrees. So find the greatest value of x. Angle AOB we can write as 2x plus 3x plus 10. So we can write an equation, write an inequality. 2x plus 3x plus 10 is less than or equal to 90 degrees. If we collect the like terms, 2x and 3x make 5x. So 5x plus 10 is less than or equal to 90. Take 10 away from both sides. So 5x is less than or equal to 80. And divide both sides by 5 will give us x is less than or equal to 16. So x is less than or equal to 16. What's the biggest thing x can be? That's 16. Question 29. A, B, C and P, Q, R are similar. That means one's an enlargement of the other. They've got the same angles. One shape's just bigger right angle triangles angle abc abc equals pqr work out the length of pr so if i'm going from the little shape to the big shape 
So if I'm going from 10 to 15, these, these two sides match. They're on the same side of the triangle. So what do I have to multiply 10 by to get 15? So if I'm going this way, I'm going to times by 1.5. So if I'm going backwards, I do the opposite, which is dividing by 1.5. So to find the length of PR, these two lengths go together. One's an enlargement of the other. So it's 9 divided by 1.5. So 9 divided by 1.5. How many 1.5s go into 9? Or it might be easier if I double top and bottom. 18 over 3. And it's 6. 6 1.5s go into 9. Or 6 3s go into 18. So PR must be 6 centimetres. Triangle EGH is congruent, so exactly the same as triangle KGF. So these two triangles are identical. H to K is 10. So the whole way is 10 centimetres. H to G, so this part, is 4. Work out the length of EF. So G to K must be 6. So that means the short length, the shortest length is 4, and the, well, the second longest length is 6. So now we're looking at E to F, so the short length is 4. This long length is a 6. So E to F must be 6 take away 4, which is 2, and it's in centimetres.